there have been calls this week for women going through the menopause to receive special treatment at work. And with a recent government report suggesting the menopause is costing the economy millions every year, we're asking if more must be done. Now, joining me is Lorraine Hegarty, who believes the menopause cost her the job she loved, and Diane Danzerbrink, the founder of Menopause Support. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. It's, Good um, morning. Well, I'll come to you first, Lorraine. It was about, you were about 42, were you, when you began? I was my mid-40s. Mid -40s. I was perimenopausal yeah. up to the age of probably about 49, 50 when the menopause did start. Okay. And that's when I started to have some issues. Yeah, and you, you were a midwife. I was, yes. I was working as a midwife. The job that you loved. And you describe I, yourself as someone that jumped out of bed every morning. You, you got to work. You were absolutely. full of energy. And yes. suddenly it just all started absolutely. to slow down. Yes, yes. I, I, I just totally drained, very tired getting up in the morning. I mean, the shift pattern of my job do, didn't really help the situation because, um, you know, towards the end of, of my career in midwifery, I was doing on calls, being woken up in the middle of the night. So if you were having a, a you know, a, a difficult night where you were having night sweats and a little bit of insomnia that, that sometimes, you know, you were getting out of bed at three o'clock in the morning, going out to attend um, a woman. And then um, if you weren't out for a certain amount of hours, then you were having to work the next day as well on yeah. top. So that was quite tough um, for me. And so these, these symptoms that we all sort of no as being menopausal symptoms really started to have a, a detrimental effect on you to the point where you just you didn't feel yourself at all. No, not and at all. And you were going to the doctor. Counselling was actually offered at one point because you just weren't quite sure what was wrong with I you. I mean, in the end, I had to go, I had to take sick leave. Um, there was a situation at work that happened um, one day. Um, it's very difficult for me to talk about this, but I'm going to talk about it because I think it's really important for women to understand that this is how far the menopause can actually take you. Um, a situation had happened. I had uh, driven home. Well, I didn't actually go home. I was afraid to go home because I felt quite suicidal. Um, I sat by the sea. Um, I reached out to a friend of mine who is a trained counsellor who managed to talk me down and I wasn't prepared to go home until I knew my husband had arrived um, because I didn't feel safe to go home. At that point, um, I decided to reach out to the GP who was quite concerned about me, um, put me on to um, antidepressants, which is the right course of action. And obviously, because I was off for a certain amount of time, then I had to be um, seen by occupational health. Um, in occupational health, I saw a male doctor, a uh, male doctor who um, put it down to work stress and depression. Um, at the time, I was able to reach out to Marion Stewart, who I'd seen in the 90s um, for PMT symptoms, and I'd remembered Marion, so I was able to reach out to her, and I started her programme. And within a month, I got a huge improvement in my symptoms, but by this point, I had decided it was time for me to turn my life upside down, and I decided to go and actually go and live in another country. And that's where I live now. I live between uh, the UK and Malta, which is where I live with my husband. Diane, this all resonates with you. A fairly similar story in, yeah. in terms of, of, of the symptoms starting to affect your entire life as well, feeling incredibly down about yourself. Um, and it shocked you when you realised this was the menopause, that there just wasn't anyone to talk to about it and yeah. the fact that we don't talk amongst ourselves enough about it why yeah. why is that so i had a hysterectomy um, which put me into surgical menopause so if your ovaries are removed you're straight into menopause and nobody had told me about the mental and emotional symptoms of menopause so when they hit me they hit me really hard and what you know what lorraine was saying really resonated with me because i had a day where I thought, I don't know if I want to be here anymore. Mm. Um, and because of that, I rang my doctors and said, is there a menopause support service I can speak to? And they said, no, there's, there's nothing like that. And after I'd finished, you know, sobbing, um, I said to my husband, if I ever feel well again, I'm going to make sure I change that. And essentially, that's where menopause support came from, mm -hmm. because there was nothing. What we need to do is we need to, we need to educate not just girls, boys too. Mm. You know, kind of when at, at sort of 11, 12, 13, menopause needs to be spoken of because they've all got mums, yeah. they've all got aunties, grandmas, etc. They're all going to go through it. And one of the things that I hear so regularly is people having to give up on careers that they've worked so hard for. I had a woman the other day who broke my heart who told me that I, when I finished speaking to her, 
do you know what, I think this might have saved my marriage. Right. That's one example. We need to upskill our health professionals. Mm. We, need to, we need to educate the population, essentially. Yeah. And we need to do what we're doing with mental health. We need to make it less of a taboo. Well, Sorry, from my point of view, I just wanted to say that, you know, working in a profession that is predominantly female, nursing and midwifery, there is no support. Mm. So that would be a really good place to start the education because yeah. that is a large organisation that employs a lot of women and a lot of women who are struggling. Yeah.